Hello everyone, and welcome to your fifth core animation tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with paths in keyframe animations. So this is more or less a continuation of lesson four. And in lesson four, we talked about using CA keyframe animation objects. And this essentially allows you to set up various values that you want to go to during the course of your animation. So it's a fairly simple idea, and I covered all that in lesson four. If you still have the code from lesson four, you know, grab that, open it up, and just add whatever I'm going to show in this tutorial. If you don't have that and you already watched lesson four, you can grab the code from GitHub, or if you haven't watched lesson four, watch it. All right, with that said, uh, the one issue that you may or may not have noticed with the previous tutorial is that with these keyframe animations, there's no good way of doing sort of smooth paths or circular like paths. And this downfall is because you always have to specify a bunch of values that you want to iterate across. So for example, if we were trying to make a circle and we want to set all the values that we have to go across along this circle, you know, going to straight lines to each one of these values is not going to make a very pretty circle unless we have tons of these values, right? To make a nice circular animation, you almost need probably like 100 values to make a smooth circle. So there's a better way. So you can breathe a sigh of relief if you've, I don't know, I hope you weren't trying to make a circle. But anyway, there is a better way. And the better way is to use paths. Paths are an easy way to generate arcs or ellipses or you know any kind of curve that you want to make so that's what a path is a path just represents some kind of thing you take or some kind of path right that's what a path is uh, if you really don't get that concept just run across your house run in a circle then run back you just did a path my friend all right that is what a path is good enough um what are we going to do? Essentially, we want to take all the code that we had in lesson four, and we want to look into changing our animation. So like I said, I'm not covering anything. This is all the same as lesson four. So we have our keyframe animation here. We've set the duration to be five seconds long. The calculation mode we're also going to set, which is rather important that you do set, um, is the, the KCA animation paste. So this allows us to have a, uh, essentially the path will be a paced path. So it means that we'll move, move, move along the path at the same speed all the time. So that's, uh, that's usually what you want if you're using paths is to move along the path at the same rate all the time. If you make it linear, then uh, this means that different spots along the path might be faster than others because of the distance, right? So if you are moving from one point to another and uh, it's further than, you know, maybe you move across the screen and then you move back half the distance. If you have a linear uh, distance for this, it's, it's going to split those up and make it different speeds. So if you want to make the path one smooth path that it goes across at the same speed, you want to use the animation paste uh, constant. All right. With that said, how do we make paths? Well, we now have to use CG path refs. These are uh, paths that, uh, well, they're defined in the core graphics. Uh, I don't know, is core graphics a framework? I'm not sure, but it's, it stands for a core graphics path reference. And anytime you want to make a path, you can use a CG path ref. Now to make an actual path though that you can manipulate and change, you have to make it a CG mutable path ref. This means that for obvious reasons you can change it. It's mutable. If you just create a CG path ref, you usually get these back from either uh, you know functions that give them back or uh, there's different ways of creating just a path. Nonetheless, uh, we want to have a mutable one, so we'll call it CG mutable path ref. You'll notice there is no star like we usually do for Objective C objects. That's because these aren't Objective C objects. These are C based APIs. So anytime you see ref, this usually means that it is already type defined to be a pointer. So you don't actually have to put the star extra. It's already included in the type itself. So this is a pointer to a path, but it's already defined as a pointer. So you don't have to worry about it. All right. 
to create one of these, we call the method, or not method, I always say method, but I mean function, CG path create mutable. Anytime you're making, uh, I think for pretty much any object that was a C-based API that Apple ever made, uh, this pretty much follows all the same uh, syntax or, uh, I don't know what I'm really looking for, but they all have the same kind of naming uh, standards, I guess. So anytime you're making something, you essentially use the type, which is a CG path. If you want to create one, you call create on it, and there will be a create method to make one. There's a bunch of different options for creating. You can create copies, make a mutable one, make a mutable copy. You can make an ellipse, you can make a rect. As you can see, create is where it's at. All right, so that now creates us a mutable path. How do we, you know, change this path. This is an Objective-C object, which means it doesn't have any methods, which means that we use functions. So we uh, would call a function like CG path, and we want to do something. So anytime you want to do something with a object that's a C-based API from Apple, you pretty much just want to use the name of the object, which is a CG path, and then do something. So we want to move to a specific point. This is always something you want to do when you create a path, move to the place you're starting. So we'll move it to a specific spot. So sorry, the first, I'm kind of jumping ahead here. The first parameter that we pass in is the path itself. So we want to pass in the thing we want to change, obviously, or else we have no idea what we're changing. So pass in that object. The next thing is the CG Affine Transform, which is basically, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a matrix that uh, can manipulate how your path is transformed. So if you want to flip your path or something like that, pretty sure you can use those. I haven't used them in forever, so, uh, but I can do a tutorial if people are interested in that. Uh, but that essentially allows you to manipulate how your path is uh, positioned currently. But we're not really concerned with it, so just pass in null. What we want to do is move to a specific point. So we are going to move this point to 0, 0, because that's where our image starts out on the screen. So that's where we want to define our path to start. All right, so now to actually add things to this path, we want to use CG path add. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different options for adding stuff. There's adding arcs, there's adding curves, there's adding ellipses, adding lines, there's adding rectangles. There's a bunch of different things, and uh, I'm not going to cover them all. I'm just going to cover lines and arcs in this tutorial. Arcs are rather complicated, so you might even want to look up arcs a little beyond what I tell you in this tutorial because they're kind of confusing. But um, with that, uh, the rest of them shouldn't be too complicated to figure out. All right, so let's start out with adding an arc. So we'll say CG path add arc to point. That's the method we're going to use. You could also also use add arc. Uh, it's kind of up to you, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, make we'll use the more complicated one. So the first thing we pass pass in is our path. The next thing is null because we don't want to use that affine transform. The next thing are these two points. So we have x1 and y1, which represents the first point, and we have x2 and y2, which represent the next one. And the last part is the radius of the arc itself. All right, so what does all this mean? Well, essentially, what it means is that we will have uh, different, well, it just means different things, I guess. So let's uh, comment this line out for a second and go to our little application here. And let's see if I can demo how this would work. So we have our first point, and then we have our second point. The first point uh, represents the line from the current point you're at, which will be 0, 0, which is what we're starting at, right? We define 0, 0. Then, so we're, the first point will be the, this line that we're creating from here to here. So let's just say that we want to make an arc that goes from here and then it kind of stretches to the middle kind of making the circular motion as if the center of the circle is here and we're making sort of a circle around all right so to do this we have to define two lines which we're defining here basically and these two lines are tangent to the arc you're making now tangent means that the arc or the curve part if you want to think of it that way, will be just touching the lines we create. So this arc is just touching these two lines, and that is basically what defines how the arc is created. 
it's kind of complicated and uh, you can look up some documentation on it too I'll talk about that in just a bit but anyway back to this we want to create a line and then another line and these two lines define the uh, ta the tangent lines for our arc so if we're defining a, a, an arc that goes from here to here like this in the circular motion we want a point here so it'll form a line from here to here and then we want our second point to be from here to here and that will be the second point so there's a line here and a line here this means that the arc essentially will be tangent to this line and then this line it means that the finishing the, the endpoints of this arc are along these lines it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be at these points in particular and in many cases they won't be at these points but uh, it just means that you're defining these two lines and the arc will be tangent somewhere along both of these lines the next part is the radius so the radius defines uh, basically the size of the arc so if we're making a uh, basically a circular arc then we want to have our radius to be right here or the center point of our arc to be right here and the radius then outstretches to how far the arc is so if we're making a, a rate or an arc that goes from here to here let's say this point is 200 200 that means that our radius should be 200 right if our center point for our arc is going to be here and this point here is 200 200 then it means our radius of the arc should be 200 as well so we'll want the radius to be 200 and we want our point from here and then work uh, right across to this point anyway hopefully uh, this will kind of make sense by the time we've run through it but uh, let's go ahead and start it out so we've got uh, this thing here and uh, we want this to go what am I trying to think of the, this is the first point we're going to so this is 0 200 right that's the first point that I talked about the next one is 200 200 and the radius is 200 coolio so let's go ahead and test out this path it's pretty easy to test you just the the keyframe animation has a path property and you just set it to be the path that you want so we can go ahead and run this and we can see that if we run it we get a path or we get the bike and it moves along that path right that's pretty obvious so let's if I change the duration a little bit here let's try it again just to see it a little faster we can see that it goes in this nice arc motion to there and then it just does the jump right because we're only defining this animation all right cool so that's what we want let's make another arc now so CG path add arc to point and we're gonna make uh, just basically an arc continuing on to the back down to the bottom of uh, the, the screen so it's just basically completing the semicircle for this path so what we want to do is pass in our path pass in null for that then uh, we want to move a point to 400 200 the next point will be on the bottom which would be 400 0 and the radius again would be 200 all right so let's just make sure that worked as we planned if I run this we can see we we get a nice arc like motion isn't that pretty I think it's pretty pretty all right so that's uh, essentially what it was in the case you didn't catch how I made that just looking at these points right we the first part of the animation goes to 200 200 then we're defining the lines from here to here right line here line here and uh, the line from 200 200 goes to 400 200 and then the next one goes from uh, that point to 400 0 and the radius again the center point of the arc would be here and the radius is 200 from there to there right that is our animation I just want to run it again cuz it's so pretty all right next part uh, let's say we want to hmm, what do we want to do I don't know we just make up any animation let's say we want to now go from here to I don't know up here and then back down for no particular reason so let's go and add a line so we have add line to point pass in a path pass in null uh, let's go to I don't know 200 300 and uh, let's just say we want to go back to the beginning now so to go right back to where we started which is the point we defined in the beginning we can use this handy dandy method called CG path close subpath 
and that just means it'll close the path from where it started to where it currently is located. So we just pass in path. And that's an easy way to close off our path. You don't have to do this, but uh, for our sake, it's a nice another another function that you should know uh, to use. All right, there's our thing, wee wee wee, and does that. So it's pretty cool, right? It has this nice paste uh, thing with it, and it moves. It's pretty nice. All right, I just love watching that. I don't know about you, but I like watching it. All right, uh, let's try out a different calculation mode just to show how these uh, kind of defer. I'm going to change my duration to 5 just so you can see this. So if I run this, and here I go, I click. You can see it takes a little while. It kind of takes a little while up there too, and then it does that. Now, I don't really know why it does this, to be honest, but there must be something to do with uh, the calculations of points that it's making at these arcs. But for obvious reasons, uh, it doesn't work all that nicely. So using the paste uh, key is very important when you're working with this so that it actually does do a perfectly smooth animation across the entire path. Very cool. All right, so this is nice, right? We don't have to work with individual points. We don't have to work with uh, the key times that each of these work with. The animation is just nice and paste. The last thing that you want to do with this after you assign it is release it. This is very important. So CG path release is what you want to call. This is actually uh, for all core graphics objects. You always want to call release uh, CG. Uh, what is the method? CG. I always thought it was CG release, but release. Okay, I don't know what the method is apparently. I'll remember it at some point. But anyway, CG path release is what we want to use. And why isn't it working? CG path release. Let me just try that again. Release. Okay, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, CG path release is what we want to use to actually release the path. And this, uh, in terms of memory management, right, this is why we do this. We create a path. It has a reference count of one, right? It means it's it's an object. It's being held onto by us currently. When we're not using it anymore, right, the animation now holds on to it, so we must release it. So that's why we call CG path release like that, and uh, that's important. So make sure you do that, or else you'll be in trubs. So anyway, uh, as you can see, our animation still works, even though we've added that release call. All right, so that is how you can work with paths in uh, CG animations. And... Um, that release thing is still really bothering me. I, I can't believe I can't remember what it is, but CG something release. Anyway, who cares? Uh, that is all we had for this tutorial. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, test out uh, you know test out those other adding you know adding the lips to your uh, thing. See if you can get your uh, your bike to go around in an ellipse motion. Uh, there's tons of different things you can try out with uh, CG paths. So be a you know adventure and try out some different functions they're they're fun all right anyway like i said if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below please subscribe to the channel and look forward to a new tutorial starting next week all right and uh, you know subscribe to me on twitter see you next time